10,000 feet. Turn left onto Rockaway Avenue. So, uh, just a quick heads up. Uh, it's a pretty graphic story. Uh, so please, if it's not your cup of tea, I don't blame you. Uh, please uh, do not listen or watch this video. On December 7th, 1993, Colin Ferguson purchased a ticket for the 533 eastbound train at Flatbush Avenue Station in Brooklyn, which stopped at the Jamaica Station in Queens. He boarded the third car of the eastbound Long Island Railroad commuter train from Penn Station to Hicksville, along with more than 80 other passengers. He sat on the southwestern end of the car, carrying a handgun and a canvas bag filled with 160 rounds of ammunition. As the train approached the Maryland Avenue station, which is uh, where we're headed to now, this is the surrounding area in Garden City, a few minutes away from there you will see the train station. As um, you know, as they approached the Maryland Avenue station, Ferguson drew the gun, dropped several cartridges on the ground, stood up, and opened fire at random. During the next three minutes, he killed six people and injured another 19. Some passengers at first, um, they mistook... The, uh, the gunshots uh, for caps or fireworks until a woman shouted, he's got a gun, he's shooting people. Ferguson walked east, forward, which is forward on the train, pulling the trigger steadily about every half second. Several passengers tried to hide beneath their seats while others fled the east uh, fled to the eastern end of the train and tried to enter the next car ferguson walked down the aisle of the train and shot people to his right and left as he passed each seat briefly facing each victim before firing. The New York Times wrote that the motions were as methodical as if he were taking tickets. Ferguson said, I'm going to get you over and over as he walked down the aisle. Other passengers farther away in the train did not realize that a shooting had occurred until after the train stopped. As a crowd of panicked passengers fled from the third car into neighboring cars. One man appeared annoyed by their unruliness and said, be calm, before they forced a train door open and fled into the station. Two other people were injured in the stampede of passengers. The train's conductor was informed of the shooting but he decided against opening train doors right away because two of the cars were not yet at the platform. An announcement was made ordering conductors not to open the doors, but engineer Thomas Silhan climbed out the window of his cab and opened each door from the outside so that panicked passengers could escape. As there you see the LIR approaching, we are at the Merlin Avenue station. And people would get off the platform and uh, walk down and make their way, you know, to their cars and their homes. This is the back of the station. So Ferguson had emptied two 15-round magazines during the shooting. While he was reloading his third magazine, someone yelled, grab him. Passengers Michael Connor, Kevin Blum, and uh, Mark 
McGinty tackled him and pinned him to one of the train seats. Several other passengers ran forward to grab his arms and legs and help to pin him across a third seat row with his head towards the window and legs towards the aisle. When he was pinned, Ferguson said, Oh God, what did I do? What did I do? I deserve whatever I get. He also repeatedly pleaded with those holding him, Don't shoot me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Five to six people continued to hold him pinned for some time. while they awaited relief. He was held down for several minutes. An off-duty um, police officer was picking up his wife from the train, then boarded the train and handcuffed him. As you could see, some pictures, uh, scenes from that day. And, um, you know, there you see pictures of him <laughs> representing himself in court. Yes, believe it or not, representing himself in court. Let me talk to you a little bit about this trial. People, uh, police detectives said that Ferguson had been planning this shooting for more than a week. Called him deranged. He is the deranged manacle person. Just wanted to explode. Police found pieces of notebook paper in Ferguson's pocket with scribbled notes with the heading Reasons for This. One of the notes referred to racism by Caucasians and Uncle Tom. They included a reference to the false allegations against me by filthy Caucasian female on the number one line, a reference to his February 1992 arrest. So Ferguson's trial to be proved to be bizarre as he cross-examined police officers. Yes, he represented himself and spoke of himself in the third person. Cross-examined the police officers, cross-examined the police officers that arrested him and the victims he shot. Can you believe that? It was broadcast live by local media and court TV, but was overshadowed by the O.G. Simpson murder case going on simultaneously on the West Coast. Ferguson argued that the 93 counts he was charged with were related to the year 1993, because this happened in 1993. And he said, had it been 1925, he would have been charged with only 25 counts. He admitted bringing the gun onto the train, but claimed he fell asleep and another man grabbed his gun and began firing. He also argued of a mysterious man named Mr. Sue, who had information concerning a conspiracy against him. He also found another man who was willing to testify that the government implanted a computer chip in Ferguson's brain, but at the last minute decided not to call him to the stand. Can you believe that? This individual, Raul Diaz, was a parapsychologist from Manhattan and claimed during a press conference on the courthouse steps to have witnessed an oriental man press a chip into Ferguson's head prior to the attack. 
His cross-examination questions mostly started with, is it your testimony in Ferguson? And would simply force the witness to repeat the testimony already given. When a witness refused to answer the question to his satisfaction, he would often ask the judge to admonish the witness to answer the question during the course of his cross-examinations. Ferguson would refer to himself in the third person, most particularly asking the victims of the shooting, Did you see Colin Ferguson? To which the witness would reply, I saw you shoot me. Legal experts pointed out that Ferguson's questions were pointless and were not geared towards rebutting testimony. By not recognizing when to object to testimony and closing arguments, he's, he lost his right to appeal on those grounds. Among the defense witnesses Ferguson requested was then-president at the time, Bill Clinton. Ferguson uh, originally sought to question himself on the witness stand, but ultimately did not do so. He told the judge and media outlets he intended to call a number of witnesses who would prove his innocence, including a ballistics expert, a handwriting expert, and two regular eyewitnesses, but they were afraid to come forward and take the stand. Ultimately, he did not call any of the witnesses. Convicted in February of 1995, on the murder of six passengers who died of their injuries. Also convicted of attempted murder for wounding 19 passengers. He received 315 years and eight months to life, meaning his current earliest possible parole date is August 6th, 2309. 2309. Never going to see the light of day. Piece of garbage. The judge said Colin Ferguson will never return to society. Spend the rest of his natural life in prison. After his sentencing, he was incarcerated. Uh, upstate New York, and get this, in 1994, he was apparently involved in the fist fight with fellow inmate Joel Rifkin. The brawl began when Ferguson asked Rifkin to be quiet while Ferguson was using the telephone. The fight escalated after Ferguson told Rifkin, Apparently, I wiped out six devils, and you only killed one woman. To which Rifkin apparently responded, yeah, but I had more victims. Ferguson apparently then punched Rifkin. Ferguson apparently then punched Rifkin in the mouth. One psychopath versus another psychopath. But Joel Rifkin uh, actually murdered... Uh, I did cover, I did uh, drive by his house, which was in um, East Meadow. Uh, if you guys want to check out that video, if you're interested in um, in that story. Um, you know, at the end of this video, you, you will see some news clips of um, the story that was covered uh, during that time in... 1993 uh, you've probably already seen in this video you'll have some um, news clippings uh, pictures and uh, um, you know and pictures of um, of the, the highlights of that day um, yeah
So the LIRR cars in which the shooting happened were held out of service for potential use as evidence. They were then, believe it or not, renumbered to 9945 and 9946. The unit, how bizarre is this? The unit, and is even as of last year, the unit still has regular service. Let me take you to the um, news clippings and the videos and the stories. ...and says he will defend himself. What would follow is one of the most bizarre courtroom spectacles anyone had ever seen. It's going to be mental illness theater. It's going to be all of us sucked into Colin Ferguson's own delusional behavior with the aid of the prosecutor. On January 26th, 1995, the trial begins of the accused gunman in the Long Island Railroad Massacre. What would follow is one of the most bizarre courtroom spectacles anyone had ever seen. Choosing to represent himself, Colin Ferguson, referring to himself in the third person, denies being the shooter. The evidence will show that Colin Ferguson was in fact a well-meaning passenger on the train. This is a case of stereotype victimization of a black man. And subsequent conspiracy to destroy him. He was a very intelligent individual what's the sense of people pointing fingers when there were inconsistencies in their police statements and their grand jury statements who do you believe i don't know what he you have seen the suspect is on tv am i correct i saw you shoot me and i saw i've seen you on tv 